Some breaking news in the world of college athletics as it is announced by the Pac-12 and these other universities that four universities will be transitioning from the Mountain West to the Pac-12 in Boise State, Colorado State, Fresno State, and San Diego State. There are now six state schools that are going to be in the Pac-12 starting in 2026. Dylan, your initial reactions to this? All-state conference, baby. We need to get that all-state uh, plug. Yeah, I mean, obviously, probably option C in everything. Option A, never happened, Big 12. Option B, you're rooting for chaos in terms of the ACC, in terms of Florida State and Clemson winning their lawsuit and, and being able to break up that grant of rights in that conference. And the other option, I mean, essentially what the Pac-12 did here was they just stepped right in front of the Mountain West Conference for a new grant of rights and a new media deal. And they grabbed the four best brands that you possibly could. Boise State. I'm happy for their fans. I'm sure their their fan base is is extremely excited about this. Obviously, it's it's not the Pac-12 that they've envisioned always wanting to join. Fresno State, San Diego State, you have your staple in the Central California as well as Southern California. So now you're back in California. Colorado State, Fort Collins, you kind of are trying to attack that Denver market there. So you know, they said that they had $65 million put to the side in terms of trying to add schools and build the conference up. So that's been used and, you know, we're seeing their play right now and, you know, now just need two more teams to be uh, recognized as a conference in 2026. Yeah, so after these universities are added, that makes six in the Pac-12. After these teams leave the Mountain West, we'll have eight schools remaining. So they will still be, you know, a conference. I saw a stat today with an article that the teams that are moving from the Mountain West to the Pac-12 have won nine of the 11 Mountain West Conference Championship games since the title game matchup began in 2013. So out of the Mountain West, it is basically the top four universities and programs that are coming over to the Pac-12. Just 10 days after it was announced that the Pac-12 and the Mountain West couldn't come to an agreement on a schedule for 2025. So Curious to, to hear more of, of the behind the scenes of what exactly happened, but big announcement. And it, and it also sounds like no one really knew that this was coming until it was announced today or last night, you know, some leaks started to get out. And, and that's, that's what the, the craziest thing is, is BJ Reigns. He's very in tune, uh, Boise state beat writer and, and reporter over there. And he said last night, I talked with multiple coaches, staff at Boise State in the last 30 minutes who were surprised and not aware of the Yahoo Sports report. They didn't have any knowledge. The group of people in the know on this stuff is apparently very small. And if you remember when everything originally went down in terms of the Pac-12 leaving Colorado out, this and that, I mean, it just, news hit the fan like that. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, ears are tight in these types of situations, you know, it's, it's, it, it makes logical sense in terms of, of bringing these schools in. So, you know, the only, the only thing we can like think of right now, glaring issues off the, off the jump, Colorado state, Boise state, they don't have baseball programs. So what are we going to do for baseball? That's, that's going to be one aspect. Obviously that's the last thing we're thinking about. Football runs everything here. Just some interest, interesting tidbits. I mean, are we going to go big West in baseball? How's that going to work? Boise state, tried to have a program uh COVID effectively knocked that out in in 2020 you know they were in the middle of building a stadium and and whatnot so a, a lot of interesting things going on and the official statement from the pac-12 commissioner Teresa gould states that for over a century the pac-12 conference has been recognized as a leading brand in intercollegiate athletics we will continue to pursue bold cutting edge opportunities for growth and progress to better serve our member institutions and student athletes. Thankful to our board for their efforts to welcome Boise State, Colorado State, California State, Fresno, and San Diego State to the conference. An exciting new era for the Pac-12 conference begins today. The statement says California State University also. Yeah, San Diego State is part of the Cal State system out here in the state of California. You either have UCs, which is UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC Santa Barbara, or you have the Cal State schools like Fullerton, San Diego State, so on and so forth. So, you know, and, and, and just kind of going back to the surprise aspect of this of Boise State coaches being blown off guard by it. I mean, baby, this is good old fashioned realignment right here. <laughs> I mean, we're not, <laughs> we're just going to let you know right when it happens, things are changing so you know it's gonna be interesting to see what the pack does how much money they're on the hook for 17 million dollar buyout uh for each school 
with a two year grace period of announcing that, that the school is leaving. So it's going to be interesting to see how that is done. I know in terms of the Big 12, uh, when they took Cincinnati, Houston, and those other AAC schools, they're paying the AAC conference back over a 14 year window. So who knows what this is going to look like? My guess is that 65 million gets dissolved right away and, and we'll see what, what else happens with these exit fees. But you have to figure that the Pac-12 is going to do their best to not spend a hundred plus million, hopefully. And regarding the dollars, Mountain West bylaws required departing schools to pay an exit fee of roughly $18 million with two years notice, which is what the four schools expect to pay. The number would jump to 36 million with one year's notice. I mean, it's technically less than the two years until, you know, July 2026 when they would officially be added. So it seems like it's less than two years, but I guess each team or each university is expected to pay the 18 million. Yeah. So my, my guess is WSU helps out with the exit fees uh, that come along with right. taking Mountain West schools after their uh, schedule alignment. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. It, it's, it's not, you know, the, the day a lot of Coug fans were hoping for there, there's, there's some Cougs on here that aren't happy and, and understand, you know, what's taking place. So yeah, it's just, it's just the lay of the land now. And it's gonna be interesting what happens with Mountain West is, is this going to now dip into the FCS side of things where maybe schools like North Dakota State, Idaho, uh, and a few of the, the other top brands, obviously South Dakota State, maybe make the push up. So who knows how far, you know, this affects the entirety of college football, but let's just get one thing straight right now. And it's regarding Cal and Stanford. Calford is not coming back. All right. A, a lot of folks are, are hoping that that's going to be the case. People are, are really not in the know if they think that Stanford is going to be in the same conference academically as a Boise State or a Fresno State. I just don't see it happening. And, and it the only reason it would happen partially is if the ACC blows up. But right now, Cal's and Stanford are set to be there until 2036. So as long as the, the conference doesn't blow up, I don't see them coming back. I mean, logically, it makes sense. But, you know, it's just like with how they operate, they have enough money to do really stupid things like travel to the East Coast and play football games and Olympic sports rather than uh, you know, be in the same conferences as Boise State or, or Fresno State that they they deem acad academically beneath them. And regarding the competition that is now coming into the Pac-12, I mean, that's one of the biggest things is that, you know, where does this conference stand and rank among the other power conferences? Looking back a little bit, Utah left the Mountain West for the Pac-12 in 2011. Utah became a powerhouse in the Pac-12 in football. They won the Pac-12 championship in 2021. And then they now have left the conference after they left BYU went independent that same year it states. And then also TCU used to be in the mountain West. These, these programs that were in the mountain West are now heavy hitters in other, you know, in the PAC 12 and now in their respective conference, Boise state has been a legit football team and franchise basically for a while now. And some of these other schools, you know, that they could take a step up and there is going to be solid competition where it ranks exactly. You know, it's going to be on the lower end of the the power conferences that are currently out there, but we'll, we'll see how, how things adjust. Yeah, no doubt. You know, when you take a look at what Boise state has done over the years, I mean, it all started in, in terms of that Oklahoma Fiesta bowl and, and Jared Sabransky and then turned into Kellen Moore and they, and they became a big time product. And, and that's what Utah did in the mountain West. Urban Meyer was there with Alex Smith. They ended up becoming a, a you know, a bigger powerhouse. So yeah, obviously here's what the plan is. It's, Get the best remaining West Coast schools together, jump the line in terms of a media deal over the Mountain West, take their best brands. Now we got to figure out who these other two schools at the bare minimum are going to be. You know, my, my, my opinion is, is they need to venture into Texas. UTSA in terms of San Antonio gives you the San Antonio market. I think UNLV is a legit school to be added after 2027 
once the buyout expires for the Mountain West Conference, I think getting Las Vegas' market is is going to be crucial. And then I think another aspect that they could take a look at is Texas State and then obviously the AAC schools. You have Memphis, Tulane, and South Florida. But I mean, how far do you want to go east? Because you could technically have games on a TV network in four time zones. You have the Pacific, the Mountain, the Central, as well as the East Coast. And that's going to give you the most you know, TV money in terms of having the, the, the best uh, amenities for different time slots. Another piece is ESPN staff writer Kyle Bonagura, a Twitter thread right here, states that aside from who and how many other teams move to the Pac-12, the most interesting question now is what kind of deal that group will be able to get and from who. Pac-12 Enterprises figures to be a key here. They are producing the CW games this year with infrastructure from the Pac-12 network. It would ease the transition to a streamer like an Apple or an, or an Amazon. Pac-12 Enterprises is also already operating as a private business, taking on clients outside of the world of college sports. If, as this business grows, how does that factor into the overall operation and benefit schools? The current Mountain West Conference media rights deal pays in the neighborhood of $6 million per school. Hard to ima imagine the departing for leave unless they're very confident it will be worth it financially. So is that maybe like $10 million per year? And then regarding the Pac-12 commissioner, she stated, we certainly have talked to them about what's important to them, what quality television looks like for them, and what's attractive. So we'll have to see if they are able to get into the streaming side of things like other conferences already have and, and what that what the media deal looks like. Yeah, I mean, you know, like the biggest thing is, can we get Apple back into it? Can we get Amazon into it? I know TNT is looking for action in terms of college sports. I, that That's just the aspect... And, and the lay of the land that we're in right now. So, you know, the hope is, is that you can find, uh, you know, a partner that doesn't have games still and is looking to break into the streaming market in terms of sports. So, you know, and, and we've watched two games uh, produced by the CW already. I think it's been a fantastic production team so far. Mike Yam getting the former Pac-12 host as well as NFL Network. He's money. You've got Ryan Leaf on the broadcast. And then Ted Robinson, who is, when you think of Pac-10 football, Pac-12 football, and, and, and a voice, it's, it's his. It's a, it's a very nostalgic voice. So, you know, the, you know, the other aspect we look at is, you know, in terms of, okay, what are, the, from a fan's perspective, it's, it's super ecstatic to have San Diego State's basketball program, Colorado State's basketball program. It's ecstatic to have Boise State's football and basketball program. And you see what Colorado State is doing too in terms of football. They're starting to get, they're start, they're, they're, they're nearly back uh, with Jay Norvell. You know, they had their quarterback and wide receiver both turned down $600,000 NIL deals to stay at, at Colorado State, and they've got their big game of the season this weekend at home against Colorado. Fresno State in the milk jug uh, will continue with Boise State. Wazoo and and Boise State. So we might now have let's let's just put it out there: the rivalry game battle for the Snake River. I think it's it's a fantastic opportunity. I think both fan bases really respect and revere each other, and and, and they're you know we're both similar fan bases in, in in aspects as well. So yeah, I'm excited to get up to Boise and see our football game and our, our football team this season up there. So yeah, you know we'll we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But you know I will share also one interesting tidbit from Mark Ziegler of the San Diego Union Tribune. This was last night in his article, and it says the six pack will spend the coming months searching for at least two more members to get to eight. Although industry experts expect them to shoot for nine or 10, Cal, Stanford, and SMU are possibilities if Florida State and Clemson prevail in their legal battle to leave the ACC and the conference disintegrates. Other candidates include current AAC members such as Memphis, Tulsa, North Texas, and UTSA. Scribe John Wilner kind of already shot that down in his article saying it's going to be hard to get these schools out of the AAC. He really hasn't been in on the no with anything over the last year and a half, two years. He's been behind in the Pac-12 news in terms of the original 10 breaking, and he was nowhere to be found this morning or last night. So, you know, it's just going to be a wait and see period. But, you know, my lasting parting gift here, Connor, is the four schools in the Mountain West and the Pac-2 
there has got to be some sort of guarantee for those four schools to pack up and leave the Mountain West Conference and join the Pac, you know, the Pac-12. I just, there, there's really no other explanation. We're going to find out here soon, whether it be in the next three months, six months, or, or 12 months, who these final two members will be for the Pac-12. Yeah, some big news today. We'll see how things progress over the coming months to the, to the next year, see what other schools they, they go out and get. WCU fans, we're going to be facing Boise State in Boise in just a couple weeks. We're going to want to get used to that blue turf because we're going to be seeing a lot more often in the coming years. So thanks for jumping on, Dylan. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things WSU, Pac-12 athletics, and much more.